in five, four, three, two. Welcome to the Third Wind channel and the eighth review of the iCarly reboot. Here on the Third Wind channel, we have already made reviews for the previous seven episodes, so go check those out if you're interested. And before I get started with episode eight, a quick spoiler warning for episode eight. Pause now if you have not seen the episode. But now let's get into the review. The episode is titled I Love Gwen, and the synopsis reads, Carly and Millicent push Freddy and his ex-wife together after a series of misunderstandings lead them to believe the couple wants to reunite. Harper and Spencer get roped into doing tech work for Millicent's school play. Exciting premise for our main characters, as it enables some character development. More about that later, but now let's talk briefly about the events of this episode. After what is seemingly an exhilarating VR game, our characters talk about the arrival of Millicent's mother, Gwen, who is also Freddy's ex-wife. Reactions are mixed, but Millicent is happy, and Freddy seems to be okay with it too. And shortly after, we find out Carly and Gwen are also secretly friends, and they keep it private not to hurt Freddy. Several out-of-context events during Gwen's Seattle visit convince Carly and Millicent that Freddy and Gwen want to get back together. So they stage a parent trap of sorts with a date, one that recreates their very first date. But stars are not aligning for Millicent and Carly as Gwen has no interest in getting back together with Freddy as she reveals that she's actually seeing someone new. Freddy's very mature about this and happy for her. Unbeknownst to Carly and Millicent, who think Freddy and Gwen are getting back together, they stage a heartfelt public acceptance of them getting back together at Millicent's school play. Things go awry in typical iCarly fashion, with Carly embarrassing herself to stop Millicent from making her speech to her parents, but it is well heard by the audience. All ends well for the former family of three, as Millicent is understanding, and both parents have moved on. Now that we've briefly covered the plot of this episode, let's do some updates on our characters. In this episode, Carly is trying her best to balance all of her close ones, wanting Freddy to be happy, Millicent to have her parents potentially together again, and the best for her friend, Gwen. Typically, in this revival, Carly has been the spotlight, and she's been more typically self-interested, but in this episode, she is selfless and looking out for everyone else. Carly also talks to herself in typical, original iCarly fashion, which she points out, which is a fun callback. Lastly, Carly also gets into trouble, quote-unquote, uh, at school, which, as the OGs remember, is something that she tried to avoid at all costs. Next, Freddy reassures us that he is over his most recent divorce and that he does love and support Millicent no matter what the status is with Gwen. However, he does miss her enchiladas. Otherwise, Freddy gets to experience his first date with Gwen again, which must be a special moment for him. Moving on, Spencer gets into a highly competitive contest with Harper, which Millicent manipulated them into, and they both end up winning, and they do a fantastic job. Millicent gets excited about her divorced parents potentially getting back together, but she's also okay when things don't work out, as they're both very supportive anyway, and this means she can get two birthdays and two Christmases. We also found out that sadly, Millicent's biological father is dead. Millicent also stars as Juliet in a play. Next, Gwen, a new character, is Millicent's mom as well as Freddy's ex. We learn that she is a marine biologist and she is good friends with Carly. She's also now started seeing someone called Ernie. Gwen makes good enchiladas and seems to care deeply about Millicent and makes time for her despite being seemingly very busy. Lastly, we get the first appearance from Mrs. Benson since the first episode. She goes on her very first slumber party with Carly and Millicent where she partakes in one of her favorite activities, doing puzzles with Freddy as the picture, who she also photoshopped to look younger, by the way. She also, of course, has the first aid kit ready and no laughing past nine, of course. Also, funnily, she has no interactions with Freddy this episode. I thought that was a little weird. Now that we've done our weekly character update, let's talk about some Easter eggs and other mentions. This episode stays fairly grounded in the present, but we have a few things to mention. The most obvious, of course, is Mrs. Benson is back again, which we have already mentioned. Next, and probably unrelated, but I feel the Toast-themed set must have been inspired by Mr. Toasty in the episode I Neville. Maybe intentional? Also, we have the show being very self-aware with Carly talking to herself. I feel this is probably spoofing on the fact that she did this very frequently in the original series. In this episode, there is also a mention of the mascot of the local school, the Bulldogs, so the Ridgeway Bulldogs, which is of course a throwback to the original series. 
But that's all I noticed in this episode, let me know if I missed anything. Last but not least, let's do some analysis and let's talk about the episode's takeaways. Gwen seems to be a nice person and everyone involved seems to respect her without any negative feelings. I have a feeling this might not be the last time we see her in the series. Carly was shocked when she discovered a heart locket of Freddy and Gwen in Gwen's possession. There's no way that Carly was hurt by it, right? There is no way that they will bring Carly and Freddy together, right? Wink wink. But seriously, nothing serious. Miss Benson mentions that she's having her first sleepover in this episode, which could be a sign that she didn't have too many friends growing up or that her parents were very strict. Also, it could be interesting if they brought Mrs. Benson in as a main character next season. What do you guys think? Speaking of our main characters, where is the Gibby mention? I will keep bringing this up because we need to know. But that's it for this episode review. I thought it was a good episode, uh, a much needed one, and I like the character development we saw here. If you like this review, make sure to check out our previous 7 if you have not already. I am excited for episode 9 next week, and I'll see you guys next week for a new episode review. Crazy to think that season 1 is almost over, but iCarly has been renewed for season 2, yay, so you can look forward to more reviews on this channel and more iCarly content generally look going forward on the Third Wind channel. But thank you for watching, I'll see you guys next week.